Hi, everybody. So today it's very exciting for the new year. I'm giving you my best movies that I saw in 2023. I saw over 300 movies, including features and TV movies and streaming and everything else. And uh, so to, to whittle it down to the top 15 was really tough. I very much struggled, but I wanted this to be an authentic list of truly my favorites that was unique to me, that didn't feel like I had to include Oscar favorites, that could include TV movies, that it really was my favorite. And uh, so I hope you all can appreciate that. And uh, you might have some ones that you haven't heard on other people's lists, which is, I think, how these lists should be. So let's get started. Let's talk about it. So number 15, I have Theater Camp. I thought this was really funny and I enjoyed all the poking fun at the theater nerds uh, like myself and uh, <laughs> the, the music was also really solid in it. And uh, so it gave me a lot of joy to watch at number 14. And this might shock people is where I have Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I really loved this film as far as its visual appeal. The animation blew me away though, but I do think that it gets pretty exposition heavy especially in the middle and uh, so the story wasn't quite there for me as far as the compared to the first movie and so maybe it's a case of too high expectations but I did really enjoy it and it made this like I said I saw over 300 movies uh, and it still made my top 15 so I did really really enjoy it at number 14 is where I have TMNT Mutant Mayhem. I really loved that the turtles were actually teenagers in this. I thought the the story was that they were that they were growing and maturing in a way we haven't seen in another turtles movie. I loved the animation. I I thought it looked raw and a little bit grittier than Spider Verse, and uh, but it was it was surprising and exciting, and uh, I really really enjoyed it. At number twelve, I have another animated film. This is an anime. It's called First the first slam dunk and this the animation was absolutely incredible uh the way that they were able to draw you into this basketball game and uh, and i mean the ending especially was so tense is he going to make the shot are they not going to make the shot what's going to happen and getting the backstory and it was just so exciting and so well done and so well animated and number 11 is where i have barbie barbie i admit has problems with the screenplay it's kind of messy it is a little heavy-handed at, at points but I thought what it had to say was really interesting as far as if we just take time to actually listen to each other how much happier we'll all be whether it's Barbie listening to Ken or uh, Barbie taking the time to listen to the to the old woman uh on, uh, on at the bus stop or Barbie and uh, actually listening to the America Ferrera character and uh, it just all of us listening to each other. I think we'll be a lot happier and it was just sweet and funny and I love the music and I've always been a big Barbie fan. So it was a joy to watch. Number 10, I have Fallen Leaves and you might not have heard of this one. It's just starting to get at our house roll, roll out. It's here in Salt Lake if people uh, are looking for a good movie to watch. Uh, this is, if you like like before sunset, before sunrise, then this is very similar to people who meet and you get to uh, see them sort of start to fall in love and you're following them along. And I loved both of the leads and, and uh, <laughs> there's a great scene where he takes her to uh on a first date to the dead don't die which is a movie i hated um and so <laughs> that was really funny and and uh i it's, it's a delight and number nine is prom pact and this was on disney channel but i think it's one of the best rom-coms i've seen in a long time i absolutely loved the whole cast i i thought everybody had great chemistry i thought it was so well written so well done and it was a throwback to your John Hughes and your other 80s teen rom-coms and one of the best that we've had in a long time. Number eight is where I have a, a little movie called Mixed Baggage. And if you followed Hallmark Keys podcast, you know all about Mixed Baggage. I did review it here on my channel. Uh, and I, I think it's just a perfect rom-com. I loved all three couples. I loved the way they intertwined together. I, I thought it was so well-written and so charming. And I just absolutely adore it. Number seven is where I have Killers of the Flower Moon. I wasn't expecting to like this that much because I'm a little bit mixed on Scorsese, but I thought it was such a compelling story. Lily Gladstone is so wonderful in the role, and I was just 
devastated for her and drawn in and uh I, yeah it really worked for me at number six is where i have godzilla minus one this is the best godzilla movie i think i've ever seen i thought it had heart and emotion i was drawn into the characters and uh, and i could actually see what was happening unlike these recent american godzilla movies it wasn't all cloudy and impossible to see what these these supposedly spectacle uh action scenes this show, i could see what was happening it was great <laughs> at number five i have a little animated film called robot dreams this is such a charming little film it's about this dog that makes this robot and they're like adventures together that they have and it's so cute and uses music so well i highly recommend it at number four i have the taste of things this is a film out of france it's a love story these two uh chefs that work for this manor and uh, they fall in love and it's beautiful and the food oh my gosh it's like the first 25 minutes is just food. It won't be for everybody. It doesn't have a ton of story. So some people won't like that, but I just loved the romance. I loved the characters. I loved all the food. It was great. At number three, I have, are you there God? It's me, Margaret. Absolutely loved all of the characters. And you, you all know that coming of age stories are usually not my favorite, but I absolutely loved Margaret. I thought she was authentic and honest. And I loved her relationship with her grandma. Kathy Bates was so good. Rachel McAdams as her mom was one Wonderful. I liked that there was a mean girl, but she wasn't just a one note. Like we understood her and we felt for her. It was absolutely wonderful. At number two, I have another film set in the 1970s. I have The Holdovers. I think a, basically a perfect film. I would change almost nothing. I Paul Giamatti is absolutely great. Really well-written characters, really touching, wonderful Christmas vibes in it. Divine jo Joy Randolph was absolutely great. Uh, Dominic Sessa in his first role, unbelievable. It had something to say, but it was also really funny. Absolutely wonderful. My number one movie of the year is Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, this movie, I think I reviewed it 10 times on Letterboxd. I think it's one of the best romantic comedies we've seen in the last 20 years, maybe ever. I thought they had such incredible chemistry. I I loved seeing their relationship and how the characters grew. And, uh, you know, it was just such a wonderful example of enemies to lovers. I loved the book, so I was pretty sure that I was going to love the movie, it's sexy, it's uh, it, it's romantic, it's really, really great. I just loved it so much. And uh, this is a, a list of my favorites, not a list of like the best made or whatever. It, it This was the movie that gave me the most joy this year by far. And so it had to be number one. Uh, so there you go. That's my list. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there'll be lots of shock. Uh, but uh, these were all really wonderful movies and I saw many others that were great that I couldn't fit into this list. I really struggled for a long time. So again, let me know what you think. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. And uh, check out the Homeworkies podcast for lots more content over there as well. And, uh, and also check out the Patreon and merch store. I would really appreciate that. You can get hashtag animation jerky shirts over there. And, uh, and I just so much appreciate all the support this year. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, an amazing 2024. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.